What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another edition, the Players' Championship edition. If you are new, welcome. If you uh, are a regular of watching this video, then welcome back. Um, we are making this video free for everyone to watch now. Uh, but if you do want to download the video, customize the weights, come up with your own projections that you can use right in Lineup HQ on Roto Grinders, uh, join RG Premium. It's a lot of fun. We got a lot of good content. So we'd love to have you uh, as a part of the team. Now, let's talk about the Players' Championship. Uh, it's going to be the biggest event of the year so far. 144 golfers in the field, similar um, cut rules always, top 65 in ties. It's going to be at TPC Sawgrass. I have played this course, and I have found the water hazards uh, many times. Water's actually in play on every single hole. Uh, it was designed by Pete Dye. It's a par 72 that measures 7,275 yards. And mu mu much like most Pete Dye courses, this isn't one that you can overpower off the tee. The average driving distance here last year was only 284 yards, which is very low. Compared to tour average, um, the greens are fairly small, 5,500 square feet on average. The fairways are fairly narrow, uh, 31 yards wide on average. And last year, we saw driving accuracy at 59%, green regulation at 59%. Uh, so you're going to see you know, a lot of golfers playing from the rough, playing from the pine straw. You're going to see a lot of water hazards. Um, and then you're going to see a lot of golfers miss the greens, which does place uh, an emphasis on short game. Now, uh, you're going to be able to make a lot of birdies out here. If you hit the ball well, you're going to give yourself a lot of birdie looks. Um, there are four par fives that uh, are very gettable. The greens themselves, they are uh, Bermuda, overseeded with Poana. So I'm not personally uh, looking at grass splits when it comes to putting this week just because they're not going to be as grainy as typical Bermuda greens that we see in Florida. They're not going to be as bumpy as typical Poa uh, that we see in California. So for me, I'm just looking at overall stroke game putting. Uh, difficulty of the course really hinges on the wind, the rain, uh, and how you know dry, firm, and fast the course gets. Now, uh, the course or the event has moved from May to March the last few years, and we've seen it play a little softer. Uh, we've seen uh, a little more drivers, a few more drivers than usual. That could be due to the aggressiveness of golfers uh, in general. As far as approach shot uh, distances, we have 40% of the approach shots coming from less than 150 yards, and then 26% of approach shots coming from more than 200 yards. So you're going to get a nice mix of wedges and then long iron shots. Uh, the recent champions, you have Scheffler at minus 17, Cam Smith at minus 13, JT at minus 14, Rory McIlroy at minus 16. So I do think we're going to see something in the teens in terms of the winning score. And in terms of golfers, uh golf you know course fit i'm not looking at anything in particular i want golfers that can find the fairway off the tee um, accuracy is going to be more important than the distance obviously if you can hit the ball far and straight keeping the fairway that's going to be an edge but uh, more important to keep the ball in the fairway this week than most weeks um, guys that are good with their you know approach play uh, this is a second shot golf course like a lot of beat die designs golfers that don't have uh, a big weakness around the green is going to be important Experience in Florida helps, experience in difficult fields, experience on difficult courses. Those are kind of some of the things that I am looking at. Uh, in terms of lineup construction, I am absolutely going to be building um, tee time uh, stacks. And because this is because, like, over the years, we've seen uh, one wave get such an edge over the other wave. And it's often not the perceived side that you might think. I think uh, a couple years ago, we saw there be a big rain delay. And then all of a sudden, it looked like one. Uh, side of the draw was going to be, uh, you know, in a better spot. And it turned out being the other side of the draw. So I'm going to be stacking both sides of the draw. Um, and then I'll also build some lineups without any uh, tee time stacks as well. But I do think for MME, if you are building uh, multiple lineups, I do think it makes sense to pair up some guys with similar tee times um, in terms of the AM, PM, PM, AM waves. Um, as far as the weather goes, looks like it's going to be pretty calm on Thursday. And then Friday is going to be pretty windy. So um, I will definitely be checking the weather. Uh, at the moment, it kind of looks like it's going to be a slight edge for the PM, AM uh, tea times, but we will have to see. I always recommend checking uh, the wind finder link that's in my articles, um, as well as Kevin Ross forecast. Um, you know, he's he's an actual professional weatherman. So I like to listen to him. Um, now let's get to the model. So, um, 
if you are new to the video, I'll just kind of recap uh, everything. So the overall model weight is up here at the top, 100%. And then it's broken down into each of these little uh, columns here with different percentages. Now you can change these percentages. Uh, let's say I want off the T over the last 12 months to be weighted 10% of my overall weight. Um, it'll automatically change the rating over here. Um, and then it'll ob obviously show you what the total weight is. So now I got to take off 7% somewhere else. So we'll just keep it at one, two, three. So I like to focus more on long-term stats and short-term stats, especially early in the year, because um, a lot of the golfers only have played, you know, three or four events so far this year. Um, and then, you know, in the winter, you know, late fall, the winter golfers rarely played at all. So I like to focus on the last 12 months and the early part of the year. Once we get a bigger sample in 2024, I'll bump up the last three months and six months columns. So I have 6% total to off the T. Um, I have 11% total to approach. Most of it weighted with uh, the last 12 months and this expected approach column. And what this does is it looks at um, the stroke gain approach from each of the different yardage buckets. So 50 to 100 yards, 100 to 150, uh, 150 to 200, and 200 plus. And then it takes the expected approach approach shots from each of those uh, buckets at this specific course. So it'll say, you know, Rory is expected to hit 10 shots from uh, 50 to 100 yards, 12 shots from 100 to 150, whatever. And then it'll apply those weights to come up with this expected approach metric for this specific course. So guys that lead in this metric this week, you have Scheffler, Xander, Morikawa, Finau, and Tom Hoagie. Strokes gain around the green, I have it at 4% total. Uh, strokes gain putting, again, I didn't put any weight to Bermuda putting in particular just because these are overseeded uh, with Poana. Um, I didn't want to use POA splits because obviously, you know, California POA is much different than, you know, these are going to be, the, the greens are going to be very smooth. They're going to be, um, you know, perfect. Um, so I just looked at strokes gain putting, 9% total over the last 3, 6, and 12 months. Birdie or better got 5%. Birdie opportunities, which is how often golfers hit it within 15 feet for birdie um, at 5%. And the bogey avoidance, I have it at 6%. Um, I don't mind bumping up bogey avoidance a little bit more this week just because you want golfers that can keep it out of the water. Again, you're going to see a lot of big scores out there. You're going to see a lot of birdies out there. Course history has not been very predictive. Um, if you look at the data golf rankings, um, this is one of the lowest on the PGA Tour. So like last week, Bay Hill... Course history, very predictive. Augusta National, very predictive. And that means golfers that tend to play those courses well tend to play them well again when they when they go there in the future. Um, and I think the fact that um, course history isn't predictive here just has to do with all the water hazards. Um, the more water hazards in play, especially ones where you can't take a drop up near the green. So like on 17, if you hit it in the water, uh, the island green, you're either retain or going to the drop spot, which is you know only like 40 yards closer. Um, some courses, you know, if you hit it up by the green, rolls into the water, you can just drop right there. So I think that has something to do with it. Um, more often than not, the more water hazards there are, the higher the variance of the tournament. That is why you'll see, like, Roy McIlroy, miscut, one, miscut, 33rd, miscut. You're going to see that with a lot of golfers in the field this week. So I only put course history at 4%. Uh, course fit, this just looks at the um, stats that are important for this course and kind of applies them. Um, to each golfer. So guys that, you know, fit the course the best. Um, I put that at 6%. Um, guys that, or sorry, the next category is going to be strokes gain per round on difficult par 72s. Um, we can look at who rates out the best in this one. Yeah, Homa, Scheffler, Hideki, Zalator, Xander, pretty good list there. Um, strokes gain per round in Florida. So it's going to be over the four main Florida courses on the PGA Tour over the last four years. Scheffler, number one, Shane Lowry, Justin Thomas, Max Homa, and Keegan Bradley. Then you have form um, over the last 10 weeks. So this is the, every, every week so far in 2024. And uh, I like breaking it out this way because you can see how often a golfer plays as well as how, you know, they're trending. So somebody like Scheffler, obviously been in great form all year. He's played in six events so far, and this includes form from – all the major tours, so Corn Ferry, PJ Tour, DP World Tour, Live Tour, which won't be needed until we get to the Masters, but um, I include those numbers anyway. Um, and then, so like somebody like Eric Cole, let me look for him real quick. He plays a ton of golf, um, as you can see here. So he's played 
nine of the first 10 weeks to start the 2024 season, which is pretty crazy. So if you think, you know, if you, if you get a guy that's played like eight weeks in a row, maybe you think, you know, he's tired, um, something like that. Uh, but anyway, this these columns kind of give you a good idea of how often golfers are playing and and their recent form. Now we have the, the overall form, and I have these weighted pretty heavily. So you have short-term form, which is a mix of the last 24 rounds and the last three months. You have midterm form, which is a mix of the last 50 rounds and the last six months. And then you have long-term form, which is a mix of the last 100 rounds and the last uh, 12 months. And all these uh, go together to come up with the overall rating. So you can change any of these up here. Um, you don't have to follow my weights. You can make up your own. Um, and then we have this manual adjustment column. So this I've created because oftentimes I'll run the model and it'll say a golfer that I really like doesn't necessarily project that well based on the inputs of the model, right? So somebody, say you like Kadeki, um, coming off of the win at Riv and then T12 last week, he's been playing well. Um, certainly better than uh, his long-term form has been over the last year. So say you want to bump him up so that he rates as a positive value. Um, give him a 10% bump. All of a sudden, he's fourth in the model, um, rating out as a positive rating per dollar. He's plus four in the rank plus minus. Um, so you can go through and adjust those. I usually don't give more than like 5% um, one way or the other, but it is up to you. Um, it is a way if you are using Lineup HQ to manually boost um, a rating of a golfer. Now, uh, we have percentage uh, projected ownership here for both FanDuel and DraftKings. This rank plus minus looks at the salary rank with the model rank. So what this tells you is Max Homa is the 10th most expensive golfer on DraftKings, and he's the third in the model based on the current inputs. Uh, so he gets a plus seven here. On FanDuel, he's the seventh most expensive, so he gets a plus four here. So that kind of just gives you an idea of where golfers rate out compared to their salary ranks. Um, you have the rating per dollar uh, column, which I like to use a lot, just shows the best point per dollar options based on the inputs. You got Hubbard, Silverman, Chan Kim, some guys like that. Um, and then you're going to get a different list of names for uh, FanDuel. And then we have the round one tee time. Um, if you are playing showdown, I do like to target the guys in the morning. If you're doing first round leader bets, something like that. Um, I should have mentioned over here, we do have the odds to win top to win top 10 and top 20. Um, so what I like to do after I build my um, model each week, finalize the inputs, I go over here and I say, okay, so Xander is number two in the model, 22 to one, that's pretty good. Uh, Homa is third in the model, 28 to one, that's really good. Uh, and then this is kind of how I will decide um, to roll with my betting card. Now, sometimes I'll you know go with the get over just the model, but um, I do this the same for top 10 bets, top 20 bets, whatever it may be. So I just put those in there just in case you want to go through the model and kind of spot guys. So I like Eric Cole for top 20 plus 350. That is really nice. Um, I think I saw it up to plus 375 in one spot. Um, Doug Ginn plus 400, pretty good. Um, Hubbard was one that stuck out to me as well. But anyway, so yeah, there's lots that go in that goes into the model. Again, if you do want to join RG Premium, you can download this for yourself. If not, Hey, watch these videos, hit the thumbs up. I appreciate that a lot. It goes a long way for me. Um, now let's talk about the player pool. So um, I have golfer notes for probably 50 or 60 golfers this week. Um, I kind of look at, you know, form, you know, recent stats, um, any other anecdotal things that uh, I could find about golfers I kind of put in this golfer notes. So Scotty Scheffler, new putter in the bag last week, uh, obviously had the new beard. Um, I don't think that led to the win, but the new putter might have. Uh, I think he gained like four strokes putting, absolutely dominating performance at Bay Hill. He uh, won this event last year. Um, he's number one in pretty much anything you could possibly look at. He's actually number two in the stat model, but uh, number one in short-term, mid-term, long-term form. Um, great in Florida, great on difficult par 72s. It's hard to make a case against Scheffler, especially since we do have the lower salary floor on DraftKings this week. And then on FanDuel, the pricing is always a little bit softer. 55% ownership projection uh, is something uh, pretty crazy. Now, I don't mind the balance build this week. Again, there's a lot of variance at this course. A couple water balls could be the difference between Scotty Scheffler finishing fifth and like 25th, but uh, it's hard to see him having a bad week. Now, one guy that I really like is Xander Schauffele. For whatever reason, he's become one of the more hated golfers on the PGA Tour. Maybe it's because he's friends with Patrick Cantlay. 
But, man, he's been great to start the season. The big difference for him so far this year has been the driver. So he had a down year with the driver in 2023. Uh, He's certainly fixed that so far this year. Uh, He's gained – I don't have the actual metrics in here, but uh, top 10 and four of his six starts so far this season. Finished second here in 2018. Um, You will notice that the course history column doesn't have 2020. That's the year COVID canceled the event after the first round. Hideki Matsuyama was winning. Um, I had to now ride on him, so – Still uh, a little bum. We didn't get to see that play out, but uh, I do like Xander quite a bit. You know, he doesn't play a ton in Florida, but uh, I think it's a good course fit for him. Number one in the stat model. I bet him outright at plus 2,200 as well. I almost bet Max Homa, but didn't quite um, get there. T8 last week at Bay Hill. Very good on difficult courses. Back-to-back top 15 finishes here. Rory, I don't know what to do with Rory. So Right now, he's kind of teeing the ball down lower with his driver, and that's helping him find a lot more fairways. If you look at his strokes gained off the tee metrics the last three events, it's been incredible. Um, He's probably leading the PJ Tour over the last 12 rounds of strokes gained off the tee. But the irons have been bad. Um, He continues to make big mistakes. He keeps missing left with his approach shots. So I don't know what to expect from Rory. I don't like him as much as Xander, as Homa, um, as some of the other guys in the 9 and 10K range. So – I'm not going to have a lot of Rory, even though he's won here before. Morikawa, you would think this would be a perfect fit for his skill set, right? He's very good total driver of the ball, hits a ton of fairways. He's one of the best iron players on tour. Um, He did finish top 15 here last year. He was a first-round leader or close to it last year. But uh, man, doesn't play great in Florida. Look at this, 33 out of a possible 100 score for showcasing in Florida. I mean, that's the worst until you get down to JT Poston, who's also been really bad in Florida. Um, so that does worry me a little bit. Um, Mark how I didn't play great on Friday, missed the cut last week, but, uh, the model still likes him 10% ownership. I think I could probably get overweight on him and MME. I do like Hoplin in tournaments. Uh, the short game has kind of, uh, gone away recently. You know, we made a lot, or made a lot of progress on that last year, but, um, not so much this year. He's lost, uh, around the green. I want to say four straight events. Um, But the irons are always good. He's a good total driver of the ball. Back-to-back top tens here. So I'll be overweight on him. Model loves Henley. How do you not love Henley? He's got a very similar skill set to Morikawa in that he's all fairways and irons. Coming off of a fourth-place finish, he obviously has a much better track record than Morikawa in Florida. He's also a lot cheaper. I do think he's going to be a lot more uh, owned than this, but uh, I've never been an ownership guru. But, um, yeah, love Henley this week. I bet him outright at 50-1. to Um, so you know, I usually don't give out all my bets on, on this video, but, uh, bet Xander 22 to one, bet Henley at 50 to one. If you want to tell those also bet, uh, Adam Scott, the winner without market on FanDuel, you can get him the winner without it's uh Scheffler, Shoffle, Rory, Hovland, and JT. So you take all those five off the leaderboard and then whoever's the, you know, the top there wins that market 55 to one for Adam Scott. I think that's a really good number there. Um, but we'll talk about him in a minute. Will Zaltor is playing great. Uh, he's gained strokes in all four strokes gain, um, facet or sorry, strokes gain categories to the last two events contended at both of them. Uh, he's won at a course that, you know, has a lot of water. So I don't have any issue with him whatsoever. Shane Lowry has been playing great back to back type top five finishes in Florida. Um, really good on difficult courses, three straight top 35s here. I'll be overweight on him. Um, Ludwig Olbert, I don't know what to do. I mean, he's shown an ability to play well on any type of course. Um, this does take the driver away a little bit and that's kind of his best weapon, but, uh, he lost four strokes on approach last week and still finished T25. So it's hard not to like him, even though he is kind of expensive. Burns has been playing well. Um, but he's lost on approach in three of his last five. He's lost around the green in five straight. So the underlying metrics aren't as good as the, results he's likely just riding a very hot putter which you know he's capable of doing again but i don't love him this week at that price and ownership hideki i'll probably be underweight on hideki just because it doesn't project that well for me uh speed he's never played great here even when he was in his prime you know back when he had full control over his uh you know magical powers on and around the greens he wasn't very good here probably because he can hit some uh loose shots you know he can uh, miss fairways by 20 yards miss pro shots by 20 yards man You can't do that at this course. Cam Young's been playing well, similar to O'Baron, that it's not the best course for him, but uh, been very good in Florida. So I don't mind, you know, targeting him in large field stuff. I love Eric Cole. 
Bounced back with a nice T21 last week after the miscut of PJ National. Um, this is a much better course for him than Bay Hill. So T21 at Bay Hill was impressive. I uh, finished T27 here last year. And if you look at his numbers, so not great off the tee, but he's uh, a lead on approach, really good putter. Long term, he's good around the green. He makes a ton of birdies, doesn't make a lot of bogeys, a lot of birdie opportunities. I feel like this is a great fit for Eric Cole. I'll be overweight on him. Wyndham Clark's been playing great. Um, he's especially in the signature events, like he's like top five automatic in the signature events. So maybe he plays well again here. Don't love the price point though. Uh, Tommy had a 10 last week on the par five. That was, uh, one that hurt the heart, but he has been playing, uh, well, other than that, picked up a win on the DP world tour earlier this year. Really good in Florida. Really good at this course in his career. I uh, like Corey Connors. If you look at his numbers, I mean, he's gained like 29 strokes ball striking and lost like 23 on and around the green so far this year. Uh, don't quote me on those numbers, but it's something uh, to that effect. And if he just has one good week with the short game, he could not only contend, he could win. So I do like Connors, um, especially on difficult courses like this one. I like Adam Scott, like I mentioned. Uh, missed the cut last week, but other had been playing well otherwise. The, the ball striking num numbers have been back this year. Bino you know, decided not to play last week. That was a little bit of an interesting choice. Not really sure what to expect. Doesn't play a lot in Florida. In general, he's been very up and down at this course. I kind of want to save him for Augusta. Chris Kirk, good track record in Florida. Tigala, I know, I don't know where he plays. I mean, well, it's just hard to figure out a course fit for him because he does spray the ball a lot. He's not a very good iron player, but he's got that elite short game that can make up for a lot of mistakes. Uh, probably not going to be on Tigala this week. Sung JM, so he's going to be one of my gut plays of the week. I mentioned Xander is my other one. So Sung Jay finally, finally, finally had a good week. T18 at Bay Hill, gained in all four strokes gained categories. Very good in Florida, very good on difficult courses. T6 here last year. I think it's a great spot to load up on Sung Jay. I think he's finally trending in the right direction. Keegan's been playing well. Benny On's been playing great. Um, although his approach play has not been as good as you might expect. You know, we often think of him as like a guy that, elite with the irons and struggles with the putter but then you look at the numbers i mean the putting has actually been pretty decent you know top 60 in this field over the last six months and the approach play is not that great he is very good off the tee but uh again you kind of take the driver out of his hands a little bit at this course love hoagie he's gained like 14 strokes on approach in the last three events alone um contended here last year love doug Ginn. we saw him contend here two years ago he's been striking the ball well Siwoo Kim lost a ton of strokes putting last week, but um, is otherwise, you know, striking the ball pretty well. Um, nothing worse than T44 so far this year. So I like Siwoo a little bit in tournaments. Jason Day doesn't project well, but he's a guy that I don't mind getting to. In my MME builds, um, I'll be overweight on Cebez, a guy that always plays well in Florida. Shorter course kind of fits his profile a little bit better. Minwood Lee, always popular. Um, he was 6,600 last week. That was pretty bad by DraftKings, but uh, more expensive this week and finished T6 here last year. This is kind of the spot where everyone kind of learned who he was um, that wasn't familiar with the DP World Tour. This was kind of his breakout moment. So be interested to see how he plays this week. I probably won't get to 14%, but I will have some of Minwoo. Harmon struck the ball really well. Hasn't been in the best of form so far this year, but uh, good ball striking numbers last week where he finished T12. This seems like a pretty good course fit for him. Todd rates out well for me. Um, Hadwin, it's a pretty good course fit for him. Uh, Pabon's ball striking numbers have been good, but he finally struggled last week in you know the best field that he's ever played in. I do worry about you know the field strength, the fact that he's playing this course for the first time, but good ball striker. Post him for every reason, just doesn't play well in Florida. I'll be off of him. Nick Taylor's been playing well. Already has a win so far this season. Fitz has just been in bad form. I think you can avoid him unless you, uh, you know, see a transcript or an interview from him that says, you know, his game's trending in the right direction. It just hasn't been good recently. I'm going to be overweight on Denny. He's an accuracy guy with a good short game. Um, same with Aaron Rye. Um, he's one of the best course fits. Um so far this week, as is Lucas Glover. Cam Davis is playing well. Um, he contended here last year as well. Ekro coming off of a win and then backed it up with the T36 with some good iron numbers. I like Mark Hubbard, as I mentioned, as a top 40 bet. Um, I'll also include him in my player pool at 5,800. But it's a good course fit for Jaeger and Tom Kim, but don't have a strong take on them. 
Uh, yeah, and that's uh, about 50 golfers that we've talked about so far. So appreciate you joining me. Appreciate you watching this. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to me on Twitter at RG underscore Notorious. You can join our Discord, the Roto Grinders Discord. We have a golf channel in there that's a lot of fun. We're going to be putting together a made cut parlay for the players. We're all going to sweat it together. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, feel free to join the Discord. And then, yeah, if you want to join RG Premium, we'd love to have you. If not, thanks for watching the video. We're going to have a lot of good content out this week. We'll have the full fill breakdown with myself and STL Cardinals. That'll be out on Tuesday night. And then we also have all the good premium content. There's my first look out there that's also free that has course history, course breakdown, um, salaries, odds, all that fun stuff. So with that, I'm going to get out of here. Best of luck. Let's win some tournaments this week at the Players' Championship. Good luck. We'll see you next week.